Okay, good afternoon students and we will just have a quick recap of what we studied yesterday. We studied about uh, theoretical distribution and we studied yesterday three types of distribution. One which was just the name, okay, nothing else, that is Bernoulli distribution and two distributions in detail, that is binomial and boson distribution. So one thing we came to know about theoretical distributions that they exist in theory, okay, as well as in real life. Only from the real life we get the data and then it is existing in a theory which we put across the formulas and then we use it. And then yesterday before getting into all these things we looked at some new words. Okay, that was something called as parameter and statistics. We said parameter is something okay, uh, that is a characteristic which is associated with the population. What is population? Population means the entire data. And from the entire data, whenever we calculate the mean or population standard deviation or population mode or population variation, that is called as parameter. So what is parameter? It is a characteristic of the population. And then we saw students yesterday one more word called statistic. And what is statistic? The statistic can be mean, standard deviation variance, but of the selected sample, but of the selected process of the sample. From 100 population, if we take 10 people out and those 10 people, if we take the mean, median, mode, standard deviation variance, that is called as a sample. And from the sample that we obtain with a characteristic, which is called as statistic. And I told you this is a repeated question for ICES. Okay. And then students, we saw where theoretical distribution was used to make projections to the future. This was all day before. And then we said that binomial distribution one of, is one of the most important frequent distribution, frequently distri used, you know, discrete probability distribution. One of the, we didn't say that it is only the most important or one of the most important, okay. Uh, frequently used discrete probability distribution, okay. And in discrete, we have two, binomial as well as goes on to study here. Normal comes under continuous. Then we said that this was discovered by the same fellow called James Bernoulli, okay. And he's before distribution was Bernoulli distribution, whereas this is called as binomial distribution. And in this, we learned a new word called as trial, which is an attempt, okay, for the particular outcome, which is neither certain nor impossible. That means it can happen, but it's not sure of happening, nor we say that it will never happen. So that is called as a trial. And we saw that characteristics of Bernoulli are mainly two characteristics, okay. One is each trial has only two outcomes. Success and failure, okay, that is one outcome, that is success and failure. And one more is nothing but the trials are independent and they are a finite positive integer. And we saw what was P and Q, okay, P is probability, Q is nothing but 1 minus probability. Then we spoke about the parameters of binomial distribution saying N and P and I told you mean is NP, standard deviation is square root of NPQ, variance is N into P into Q. And also I told you that mean is always greater than variance. NP is greater than NPQ. Or in your ICI material they had given the other way. NPQ is lesser than NP. That is variance is less than NP. Then we also saw students the PMF probability mass function. How to work out these sums using formula. The formula was P of X equals to, that is P of X equals to X or F of X equals to NCX, that is combination of number of terms into the terms that are asked X, P to the power X, that is probability and Q to the power N minus X and we told the range of binomial distribution is 0, 1, 2 up to N, 0 is also included, N is also included, sir. that means N means finite number of terms and we all know that total probability is always 1. Okay, apart from that total probability is equal to 1, we saw some more points sir. Firstly, we had some confusion but later we cleared it saying that uh, binomial distribution has two modes. It can be unimodal or it can be bimodal. Sometimes it might have only one mode sir. Sometimes it might have two modes. Okay, so it can have one mode or two modes. Unimodal or bimodal. And how do we identify the mode? We saw that saying sir, n plus 1 into p is what we will do and when we do n plus p n plus 1 into p okay if we get a decimal answer sir if we get a decimal answer there is only one mode sir. we will remove that decimal and the main number we will take no approximation 
if we get the answer 5.13 we will remove 13 and we get 5 and that 5 becomes the mode of a binomial distribution sir if we get 5.75 we will remove 75 this 5 will be the mode but students what will happen if there is a whole number for example when we do n plus 1 into p what if we get the answer as 7 sir if we get the answer as 7 that means there will be two modes there will be two modes sir because it is a proper whole number we have got 7 now so there will be two modes sir what will be the mode sir one is 7 one is 7 and one more is nothing but 7 minus 1 n plus 1 into p minus 1 7 minus 1 6 so there are two modes sir 7 and 6 so this is what we study okay then we looked at all these uh, formulas and we said if in case x and y are two independent variables then nothing will change only what will change is the n plus 1 and n plus 2 we will combine together okay number of terms 5 here number of 10 terms 10 here 10 plus 5 we put them together and make it 50 and then we saw applications of binomial distribution where trials are independent outcome is success and failure same like bernoulli sir but this was using tossing many coins sampling inspection okay genetic experiment taking place in the small field and then applying it all, all over okay for all these things we said that uh, binomial is used and also we saw one of the sums okay regarding how to do a particular sum and then students when we were just going through the theory we saw one more point saying that sir in probability distribution especially in binomial okay to estimate the parameters okay to estimate the parameters for a frequency distribution we use something called as method of moments there are many methods but we use method of moments so what is it you didn't explain it to us you don't have an explanation of this just remember method of moments and what are moments and uh, what it is you don't have in detail but sir we should know how to do frequency distribution formula at least yes that we will study how to find out p q or x whenever it is necessary when we are doing the sum probably in set c okay and i told you that this is a 12th grade in state board karnataka as well as ncert this is 12th grade statistics 10 mark question fitting the probability distribution but you don't have it okay then we came down to poisson model of distribution or some call it poisson model of distribution this model is poisson distribution or poisson again one more discrete frequency distribution itself then we saw certain things when is it used under what what conditions one was there should be the success from one to other interval should be very less okay not even constant it is less okay and one more we saw was probability having success in the time interval is independent okay from one to other it is independent not dependent on each other and finally we saw that probability of finding success in a very small time interval okay is the kt where k is greater than 0 is a constant we saw that okay k is called as the constant okay and probability of finding success in a very small interval now students then we looked at the formula and this was the formula e to the power minus m into m to the power x divided by x factorial and i told you we use m here but actually it is called as lambda okay lambda or uh, it's a greek alphabet but here they have used m and i made you to remember one more thing students here saying that you should students remember the value of e here okay because you will not get any tables to work out so e is nothing but we will see the value later okay but before that students we had answered one more question that is sir in binomial the name suggests two so there were two parameters what about poisson students poisson didn't tell us anything so remember poisson has only one parameter which is called as m or lambda only one parameter it is it is having one parameter remember that okay and pmf we saw just now again p of x equals to x e to the power minus m into m to the power x divided by x factorial and range so that was 0 1 2 up to n this is 0 1 2 up to infinity this was one more thing and i told you to remember the value yes yesterday i had not underlined but today we will underline it okay value of e is nothing but 2.71828 you should remember this value for calculation 2.71828 this is the value okay and then we saw that this is a uniparametric it has only one parameter so mean and variance there it was different so np and npq here in poisson mean and variance were same 
mean is also m variance is also m only standard deviation was different it was not given here but i told you to write the standard deviation is square root m okay root m and sir what about mode mode is same there also there were two modes in binomial here also you will have either one mode or two modes same like binomial it will be unimodal or bimodal and how to find out the value so to find out the value it was easy sir and one is m and one more is m minus 1 these will be the mode okay if it is case it is a integer if it's a whole number if it's not a whole number sir then uh, if it's a point value then only m the positive integer will be taken that the number will be taken decimal will be ignored same like binomial now students when i told this much i remembered in binomial we missed one point to recall okay what was that point sir that point was about symmetrical you didn't tell anything about symmetrical sir yes i remembered it right now okay what was it so we said whenever p is equal to 0.5 q is also equal to 0.5 that means symmetrical okay not that side also not this side also and we said that whenever binomial distribution is symmetrical what was it we said the variance is maximum. highest okay or maximum. variance is the maximum sir and the formula was n by n by 4, 4. very good okay we said the formula was n by 4 okay whenever variance is maximum okay that point is here let me quickly show it to you also in case people who had missed or people who have not underlined can quickly underline it it is yeah point number e here here this information variance p equals to q is equal to 0.5 and maximum value uh, of the variance is n by 4 okay now students when we were speaking about poson it just flashed to my mind so i told you this point and then we saw so can we approximate poson to binomial distribution and we said yes it is possible poson approximation to binomial is possible but sir you said binomial is a very important distribution yes i said it is one of the important not very important so that means is poson very important yes if you compare to binomial and poson poson is important for two reasons students one reason is poson we can in, go to up to infinite infinite you know a calculation the range this was only to specific number but poson can be used for many processes okay one and number two is sometimes if binomial sum was very large if the sum is very big of binomial then what we can do so we can do poson approximation we can approximate it to poson and then do it and then yesterday i remember telling you students a couple of points here okay before explaining this i told you okay that you can do poson approximation under only certain conditions one is n should be very large that means n should tend towards infinity and p should be very small that means p should tend towards zero and i also told you that your m value and what is m value m means mean sir m is mean and what is mean in binomial mean in binomial is np sir so m equals to np this should be fine and then i made you underline after writing this point because sometimes they will give you mathematically sometimes they'll give you in points and then i made you underline this thing n the number of trials should tend towards infinity that's what i told here and also i told you that probability should tend towards zero okay that is what i told here and i told you that m and m equals to np should remain finite itself you should get a finite number only then you can do boson approximation to binomial distribution okay this was an important point that i told you okay then we went a little more further we saw the additive property additive property was same sir like binomial only only m1 plus m2 it will be nothing more and then we said okay here poson distribution happens when total of event is pretty large when there are too much of data we can use poson that's why i told you it is better than binomial and probability of occurrence is very small we usually call it as a failure distribution i told you why failure always looked at mistakes okay see your printing mistakes per page on a large book road accidents on a busy road per minute number of active elements per minute in the largest fusion process so breaking down into small 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 interval 
okay for a large data this was hold on okay and then we stopped right there i don't think we did anything else okay fitting a boson distribution all that was not done and then students we stopped there because we had to start with something called as normal or gaussian distribution you we, we usually call it normal distribution we don't call it gaussian distribution the name gaussian comes from the person who worked behind it okay carl gauss i guess he was the one who worked behind it actually there were many people who worked towards it but he is recognized okay he was the one who finally you know made it happen so normal distribution first the first point the very important point of normal distribution is the normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution why so continuous because between two numbers there might be many other numbers also because there when we are speaking we are speaking about accidents either there will be one accident two accident three accident there won't be accidents like sir today 1.3 accident happened we don't tell that sir today we say two bombs were hit at one building sir we don't say 1.5 bomb was hit or 1.2 bomb was hit okay that's why that was called as discrete distribution we will say five coins are tossed sir three dice are thrown we will not say one and a half coin is tossed or we will not say three and a half dice are thrown or 3.1 dice thrown that's why that was discrete distribution whereas this is normal distribution why is it normal sir because here there might be point answers weight of one student is 60 kg sir weight of one more student is 62.32 height of one person is 5.7 sir height of one more person is 5.3 there might be between two intervals there might be a lot of data and that is why we call this distribution as continuous distribution for wages of workers salary of people okay tax rates height weight for all these things we use normal distribution okay and why because it is a continuous random variable like height or weight that is what they have given you here okay continuous which one is continuous students normal okay now what condition it has to satisfy for a norm a continuous random variable just remember the condition students this is the condition i don't think okay yeah, i will i am able to underline integration of minus infinity to plus infinity f of x equals to 1 no matter discrete or continuous answer is 1 itself because probability distribution total is 1 okay so this is the condition integration from minus infinity to plus infinity that means understand the difference now now probably you should get a little bit of difference sir binomial distribution 0 to n poisson distribution 0 to infinity normal distribution minus infinity to plus infinity three different things yes that is why students poisson distribution is positively skewed remember okay i'm just telling you about poisson now okay compared to binomial normal as well as poisson out of these three distributions so if you ask me which is tending towards only the positive value sir it is poisson distribution why because it is positively skewed because why is it positively skewed because there is only one parameter there student in binomial you remember there are conditions where it can be symmetric also 0.5 that side half this side half so it can be symmetric okay that side and this side whereas in poisson no all the data are positively skewed all are tending towards one side there is nothing called a symmetry so in normal distribution normal distribution we will see minus infinity is there plus infinity is there two extreme corners so middle there should be something no okay we will see that okay if there is something and if there is something how it goes on we will look at it later how many parameters does this have sir student normal distribution also has two parameters which are those mu as well as sigma square that means sir are you trying to tell in normal variance aspect? sir yes mean and variance mu is mean sigma square is variance so there are two random variables so for binomial it was n and p for poisson it was lambda equals to m and for normal it is mu which means mean sigma square which means variance these are the parameters 
sir after parameters you always do mean median mode variance standard deviation sir shall we do that here itself no for this we will not do why because we have to learn something else and there are a lot of complications in normal distribution not complication thing is we have to learn a little more because there are two types one is called as normal distribution one more is called as standard normal distribution okay two are different things normal distribution and one more is standard normal distribution standard normal distribution means it has certain values associated with it since it has values it is called a standard normal distribution we will look at it later as of now we are discussing only normal distribution so if you have written your heading of normal distribution and under that if you have written that it is continuous random variable example height weight and condition is integration of minus infinity to plus infinity f of x equals to 1 and you have written normal distribution parameters mu and sigma square that means till now everything what you have written is perfect and right don't go to change anything don't go to use the word called standard until and unless i tell you now we are talking only about normal distribution this is how we write x variables follow n capital n because it is normal distribution mu and sigma square in binomial we used to write x follows b okay and we used to write in the bracket n comma p in poisson we used to write x follows p in the bracket m here we will write x follows n mu into sigma square not important that's why i'm not underlining it so next one we can see something sir is that important in fact it is very 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 important probability density function so till now we saw only mass function why is it density here students because this is continuous random variable and continuous random variable will have probability density function also so density means the values which are associated in between the intervals also and what is that formula f of x equals to 1 by sigma root 2 pi into e to the power minus x bar minus mu the whole square divided by 2 sigma square i know it's a pretty lengthy formula but you have to remember f of x equals to 1 by sigma root 2 pi into e to the power exponential power okay minus x bar minus mu divided minus mu the whole square divided by 2 sigma square little complicated here sometimes how they write the remaining part is i will just show you how they write this part sometimes they write it like this e power minus half they write students and then in the bracket they write x bar minus mu divided by sigma the whole this is how they write it. yeah i just covered that point angel okay i just covered that point in the explanation itself now about poisson distribution i remember yes i told you all one point i will tell you about poisson and i have actually covered it let me see okay if how many of them remember when we go to solving questions because i told you in case i had forgotten i will uh, tell it to you in solving question okay but i have already covered it in today's session okay so let's see if somebody remembers later when we go to the question so students see here this is the part e to the power minus half okay into x bar minus mu divided by sigma the whole square sometimes they write it like this or they write it like this both are the same the meaning of both is same but i have just written to you and in this okay and range we already know minus infinity less than x less than infinity so this is called as the probability density function probability density function and remember standard deviation should be always greater than 0 yes sir because otherwise we will not get an answer only here if this denominator is zero here everything will be infinity so we have to get an answer the answer should be between minus infinity x less than infinity now students here you have to remember a lot of things and a lot of values so patiently one by one we will go here 
because my agenda for today is to finish normal distribution and to finish set A of questions, nothing else. Because I want you to understand normal distribution properly. Next, let us see what is required here. Sir, we need to look at the curve of normal distribution. Students, this is the normal distribution curve. Again, I repeat, this is the normal distribution curve. I have not used the uh, word standard till now, so don't use it also. This is the curve of the normal distribution. So how does this look like here? This looks like a bell shape. That is why students, normal distribution curve is called as a bell shaped curve. It is a bell shaped curve, B E L L, bell shaped curve. So how is this curve? So look at it students, it is minus infinity here. It is plus infinity here. Mu is in the middle. What is mu? Mu means, sir? Mean. Mean. Mean is in the middle. Mean is in the middle. This is the curve. So is this line touching here? No, the line is not touching. That means, sir, this is the line. In the middle part, it is like this. Concave. And then when it is ending later, no, sir, it is not touching, but slowly it is becoming convex. Okay, it was concave, times word. And later it is slowly becoming concave. Okay. Remember these words. Sometimes they will ask you these scientific words like concave, convex. We will see if it is there here somewhere, we will underline. Okay, but yeah, this is the curve. Minus infinity to one side, plus infinity to one side. Middle is the... Uh, mean okay mu and it is a bell shaped curve remember the word bell shaped uh, we had studied many words students in one of the chapters in in the beginning when we studied theory bell shaped curve j shaped curve okay u shaped curve all this so this is bell shaped curve okay for normal distribution we use a bell shaped curve okay next what is very important is you should know that it is a symmetrical distribution okay it is a symmetrical distribution and you need to know certain uh, things here let me underline that okay one is normal distribution has one unique mode so understand this firstly normal curve is bell shaped i told you that is why it has only one peak in the middle in the middle there is a peak normal distribution has one unique mode one unique mode. Now students, come back to the diagram and understand something. I told you, students, this line is the mean, isn't it? I told you this is the mean. Now they are telling you it has only one peak. One peak means highest value. That means this is also the mode. This is also the mode, sir. You told just now that this is a mean. Now one peak means this is the mean, sir. And students now tell me whether this value is in the middle, that side, this side, and this value is in the middle. Yes, sir. And middle yes, sir. means what? Middle means in statistics? Median. Median. That means we come to a very important point in normal distribution. Mean, median, mode. Everything is equal. Mean, median, mode. Everything is equal. 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 So remember that. One more point. In case we have it later, we will cover it somewhere else. But as of now, remember that, that I told you some point, students, I might not cover or I might not find here. So I just tell you whenever I remember. Okay, make it a point to write. The normal curve is bell shaped. It has one peak. Okay, that means it has only one mode, unlike others, which were unimodal or bimodal. Normal distribution has only one mode. Okay. Uh, the curve is symmetrical. And the distribution is called as a symmetrical distribution. Distribution is known as symmetrical distribution. So many things here, sir. It may also be noted that binomial distribution is also symmetrical, yes, but only in one condition, p is equal to 0 0.5. We will not write that here. We will not write that here because we have already written 
uh see here this is one more thing i was telling you both the left and the right tail never touch the horizontal horizontal axis i told you it never touches down okay see your line the curve is not touching the line so the curve is divided into two equal half systems yes we know that okay now students understand the equal half that diagram you have drawn no in the diagram you saw here there is minus infinity here there is plus infinity in the middle there was mu now we should know that area students you have studied under uh, the first chapter area under the curve is always equal to unity unity which means equal to 1 so whenever we have drawn this graph from minus infinity to the mean the area is 0.5 from plus infinity also where is the area between mu to infinity is 0.5 students and minus infinity to mu is also 0.5 that means this point is very important area between minus infinity to the middle and middle to plus infinity both the positions here okay if i have to show you the diagram okay if i have to show you the diagram this diagram here students from here to here this is half area this is half area that means half and half will be one students if half and half is one this side half this side half okay total area is one that means the middle score should be how much students the middle number should be 0 zero, zero, zero sir 0 sir Because point five here, half area is that side, half area is this side, sir. So the mean becomes zero. No, some values are negative, some values are positive. Middle area is zero. So understand, students. Okay, this point comes into our minds now that the middle value is zero. That's why I guess. Let's see if they have given here. Yes, they have given your next point itself. When the mean is zero. in case the mean is zero whenever the mean is zero okay we will not call it as minus infinity to mu we will call this as area between minus infinity to zero and area between zero to infinity which is 0.5 if we take mu is zero and standard deviation is one students now what i want you to write is i want you to write till here area between minus infinity to mu equals to area between mu to infinity is equal to 0.5 okay and now we saw that mean can be zero also not that mean is every time zero mean can be zero sometimes you know on our left side we might have other values saying minus 63 minus 65 this side we have plus 63 plus 65 or any other values and all that so but whenever mean is zero students it becomes why i am telling you to write only till this point which i have highlighted now is because after this what we are going to study is a combination of standard normal variate also and normal variate also so what i want you to do is once you have written this point once you have written this much please take down the next point like this i want you to write some other point okay once this is over don't go to write anything else don't go to write all these things uh let me also remove it okay because i want you to know this point later okay all these things i will tell you later if there are any other points first let me cover from normal distribution i don't want you to confuse okay this point you have already written uh, normal distribution is known as biparametric it has two parameters mu and variance okay uh yeah now i want you to write this point students please write the side heading properties of normal distribution properties of normal distribution first property we have already seen not important at all important we have already written this integration of minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx is equal to 1 we don't have to prove it okay 
from here write the point student if you have written already don't write it first point mean of the normal distribution is mu mean of the normal distribution is mu i have already told you so you might have written it already it is called as mu standard deviation also i have told you already i have not told you i have told you variance but if you have not written please write it it was understood that time itself so variance is sigma square that means standard deviation will be square root of variance sir that means only sigma i told you we have to remember a lot of values that means we can find out something extra here yes we can find out mean deviation and what is mean deviation the mean deviation is actually 4 by 5 sigma but we write it here and remember it in this way 0.8 sigma or 0.8 standard deviation is called as mean deviation of a normal distribution these are all properties of normal distribution okay next point how to find the quartile deviation write this point students next quartile deviation is 0.675 sigma once you have written mean deviation 0.8 sigma write down quartile deviation equals to 0.675 Seven five sigma. That's why I told you there might be a lot of questions from these students. So you should know. Quartile deviation is zero point six seven five sigma. Also, how to find out Q one and Q three? So if they give Q one is mu minus zero point six seven five sigma, and Q three is mu plus zero point six seven five sigma. Students, do you remember we did somewhat like this already in quartile deviation? Where we were using x bar, here we are using mu because mu is called as the mean here. Okay, only the alphabet changes. So these are the formulas you need to note. Q1 is equal to zero minus, uh, sorry, mu minus 0.675 sigma. Q3 is mu plus 0.675 sigma. Sir, mu here is 0.5, no sir. We know that, no? No, 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 no. Mu is uh, mean. No, we don't know the mean. Zero point five is what? Zero point five is the area between area from minus infinity to mu. So mu will be zero, no sir. Uh, mu will be zero only when it is given to you. Whenever mean is given to you, under standard normal variate, it will be zero. Not here. Here they might give you based on the question. They might give you a question like there are two thousand soldiers. Their mean height is fifty seven. Okay, or 5.7. So they have given you the mean height. So mean is 5.7. Sir, but the area is equal, no sir. So yeah. it's equally dividing it. Yes, area. It's equally dividing yes. the curves. Yes. So the it, the point should be zero only. No. See, for example, what I'm trying that that will be zero, not here in standard normal variance. What is normal distribution? In the normal distribution, what is happening is say there are hundred people, hundred soldiers. Okay, out of hundred soldiers. Okay, let us talk about their weights. Okay, let us talk about their weight. They have, everybody's weight will be calculated. Okay, and uh, you know their weight will range somewhere between uh, say forty uh, kgs and eighty kgs. Forty kgs and eighty kgs. What will be their average? Let us catch their average as sixty. Okay, sixty as their average. So what will happen now? Half of the people will be. This side, half of the people will be this side. If I take the average, average will be 60 of 100 people. If I'm taking the weight average, they will be 60 kgs. But do you think everybody will be equal to 60? No, sir. Their mean is 60. Their mean is 60. Average. There, why? There will be values this side also. There will be values this side also. So we cannot call them as zero. Area under the curve is one. Okay, area under the curve is one, and that curve is which one? The standard normal curve. Now I'm just giving you a example of normal distribution. How if I tell you? Okay, you will understand it later. Where you know where we have a diagram like this. See here. When I come here, I will explain to you. In case you still have doubts, you ask me that time. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. So now, students, uh, area between minus. Okay, this we finished. We were. Okay, in the points here, quartile deviation. Okay, Q1 is mu minus 0.675 sigma, and Q3 is mu plus 0.675 sigma. Okay, now 
normal distribution is uh, symmetrical so its skewness is zero that means it is not inclined towards the right also it is not inclined towards the left also okay it is in the middle skewness okay it is not inclined towards one side nor other side it's in the middle okay so if there are 60 people in a class okay it will be in the middle 30 i support these 30 also i support these 30 also okay so i am in the middle not positively neither negatively skewed okay it has two points of inflection inflection means what now points of inflection where the height okay the peak which i told you concave okay becomes convex it doesn't touch the line because if it touch the line the peak has to come and end but no it will come and at one point the curves will change okay their direction okay in the sense they will flatten up but not touch the level and what are those points of inflection called as they are called as mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma which are the points sir these points are for the normal curve for the normal curve so from that time that you were saying that these are normal okay normal curve has a two point of inflection one is mu minus sigma and one more is mu plus sigma here the normal curve changes from concave to convex and from convex to concave okay these are the two point of inflection you should know again this is normal curve this is normal distribution is symmetrical where skewness is zero okay okay next is students try the heading area under the normal curve please write the heading because you have a lot of uh, things to remember here okay so this is called as area under the normal curve not standard normal normal curve again uh just write this much students don't write anything else just write this line don't write the below line please just write this mu minus 3 sigma mu minus 2 sigma mu minus sigma x equals to mu mu plus sigma mu plus 2 sigma mu plus 3 sigma write it horizontally itself or if you are writing it vertically write it vertically i will tell you what it is in the diagram just write that first line don't write the second line. mu minus 3 sigma mu minus 2 sigma mu minus sigma in the middle mu mu plus sigma mu plus 2 sigma mu minus plus 3 sigma oh. all that what you had written is just here and this diagram is very very important in normal distribution and after this whenever you are studying any other chapter okay that is continuation of normal distribution you have something called as hypothesis okay a uh, large sample test small sample test and all that this table is always used okay in all those things but luckily you don't have to study all that okay but in case you study statistics in your masters degree and all that and specialize you have to study all these things now students let me explain this to you i will explain this two times okay once now and once later again for a different purpose now students this middle line is called mu okay and here it is minus infinity and plus infinity now this mu is some value student some average for example i to i was giving an example to one of the students that i'm saying see this is i'm speaking about normal distribution so average weight of 100 soldiers or 100 people in a class might be 60 kg that's what i was telling might be 60 kg average so mean might be 60 but do you think students all the 100 students in the class will be 60 kgs 
No sir. No sir. There will be a deviation. There will be a deviation, sir. And deviation is called as standard deviation. Now, how much deviations might be there, sir? Or how many people might be included, sir? Students, according to the calculation, as per normal distribution, okay, not my formula, but as per normal distribution formula, from the mean, okay, from the mean mu, up to your first neighborhood, first neighborhood, your first neighbor is called as this one, student. This is mu minus sigma, and this is mu plus sigma. This is your first neighborhood, and in the first neighborhood, students, it seems if there are hundred people in the example that I gave you whose average weight is sixty kg, when I take individual data, it seems, students, approximately around sixty-eight percent of the people fall in this category. It seems out of those hundred people, around. 68% will be included in the first neighborhood itself fits in that means 60 is the average weight but 68% of those weight okay out of those 100 people 68% of the people might come somewhere around this particular area and this is called as your first neighborhood mu minus sigma mu plus sigma equally divided See this side some 34.1 percent. This side some 34.1 percent. That means totally around 68 percent. The correct value, don't worry. You have to write it later. But now I'm just telling you. So from mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma, students, this is your first neighborhood, and this has around how much values? Around 68 percent. So how much in exact? We will see later. Now let me use a different color. so this is your first neighborhood but if you select more data if you go a little further you will get some values somewhere in your 45 kg also some might people there some people might be very hefty they might be 70 80 kg when you take their average also you get somewhere around 60 only so these become your second neighborhood student that is mu minus 2 sigma that is from where to where sir from the middle till two neighborhood from this middle to this side two neighborhoods both the extremes sir that extreme also there might be people below 60 also there might be people who are 40 kg 45 kg above 60 also there might be people who are 85 90 kg sir okay two neighborhoods mu minus 2 sigma and this entire area students consists of around 95% of the data itself that means out of 100 people there might be around 95% okay here in this second category okay here in this category if you go still more far that is the last neighborhood okay normal distribution has classified the data into three neighborhoods itself okay first neighborhood 68% something second neighborhood around 95% and third neighborhood almost 100% students almost that is your let me change the color of that okay that is your this neighborhood which has 2.14 here 2.14 here okay but if you measure the entire area of this neighborhood this side it is mu minus 3 deviations away or 3 standard deviations away this side it is mu from the mean three standard deviations away mu minus 3 sigma and this side it is mu plus 3 sigma and this area it seems students covers almost everything except a little that means students this area covers this i remember the exact number this area covers the students almost 99.73% of the area that means out of 100 values almost 99.73% values are covered here and there one or the other extreme value might be there okay one or the other extreme value might be there but that is not considered so much so that is why we say okay does your uh, deviations or your neighborhood include all the values in normal distribution no sir it doesn't include all the values sir it includes almost all but little is remaining how much from 100 if you minus 99.73 i think around 0.27 or something doesn't matter sir 
correct no 0.27 no yeah yes sir yes sir okay but doesn't matter this point to area like that you know uh, there are so many things which are existing like that all and all they say only 99% germs are covered 1% still remain same way normal distribution also almost entire area is covered okay but not everything understand two different words almost entire not everything is covered so this is called as your first neighborhood mu minus sigma mu plus sigma and then you have your uh, second neighborhood here which is mu minus 2 sigma mu plus 2 sigma and then you have your third neighborhood which includes almost everything okay a little bit of things are pending here and there that is your third neighborhood students and these values are very important to remember okay these values you should remember it okay that is mm, one is that set of value up okay these values okay but i'll tell you to write this value don't remember now don't write it now please because we have another explanation to go around this okay that's why so don't write it now so see here students this is around 0.68 means around 68% i told you yeah this as i told you 95% okay 0.95 and this is i told i knew this properly 99.73 okay so that is the point given here please underline don't write the values now values you can write later just underline this particular point here uh here 99.73% of the values are covered from mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma so how much is remaining outside which lies outside is 0.0027 they have given that means 0.27 percentage i told you in percentage here they have given in decimal this point is important please write this point i think by now we should have finished the discussion about normal distribution normal distribution i think so so if you have finished writing this point let me move further i told you don't write the value okay no there are a few points to write down okay we will write that point first and finish off okay till now students we saw how to find out uh, you know normal distribution uh, sorry poisson distribution and binomial distribution when two variables were given sir nothing changed sir. only n1 and n2 we had to add that's it mean uh, you know mean median mode all those did not change at all but here in normal distribution students when there are two variables when there are two variables x and y mean might change and not only mean even your standard deviation will change students so how to calculate mean sir when there are two variables x and y students for normal distribution x and y normal distribution then your new mean will be mean of the first one mean of the second one yes sir this was same even for binomial no number of terms plus of one number of items of two yes sir even for poisson it was same no sir m1 and m2 both you had to add mean one and mean two yes so normal also it's the same yes students normal also this is the same mean is the same mu1 plus mu2 but what happens to standard deviation standard deviation of normal distribution for independent variables for independent variables is calculated this way students sp is equal to square root of variance of the first one plus variance of the second one they are simply not adding uh, standard deviation and standard deviation no they will convert it to variance and they will add the variance and then they will take the square root why because students standard deviation is square root of the variances no now we are adding two different variances so we will add both the variances and then take the square root of x plus y okay two variables okay so variance of x plus variance of y is the square root okay the square root of that and that is called as the standard deviation if there are two variables remember it in case they ask you some that applications i already told you see here if you want you can just underline where it is used height weight wage profit etc etc okay and then what is required oh 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 see here 
that when n was very large and t was very small and nt was finite we used to do binomial was going towards poson and we could do poson we studied that but see here students when n is large in which one in binomial distribution when n is very big itself and t p is neither too large nor too small neither too large nor too small that means are you telling symmetric sir around symmetric yes if it is around symmetric we can do binomial distribution tends to normal distribution itself why students can you tell me why normal binomial distribution tends to normal when n is large and probability is in the middle and probability is in the middle not large also not big also because of two factors students factor number 1 when n is very big there we cannot use binomial because we know binomial is obtained from pascal's triangle and binomial combinations we can't do for big big numbers 100 200 and all that so one might that might be the reason sir one more very legitimate reason is students probability of success is moderate neither too large nor too small students when it's neither too large nor too small p is 0.5 when p is 0.5 what do we call the binomial distribution symmetric symmetric, symmetric. and this normal distribution is what kind of a distribution continuous distribution yes but what kind bell shape bell shape means symmetrical distribution. symmetrical distribution and that is why there is a chance that binomial distribution tends to normal distribution so remember students binomial tends to poson when when n is very big p is very small and n and p is finite binomial tends to normal sir when is that when n is large itself when n is very large but probability is not less also not more also somewhere around the symmetry okay next does poson become normal distribution yes they have given here poson also tends to normal distribution it then approaches normal when in case n is very large in case n m is very large not n m is very large that means if you get e to the power minus 75 minus 80 and all you can't sit in the calculator and find 2.7128 you know to the power 75 76 and all that so that's the time we approach and use normal distribution okay then they have given to you okay all these distribution t chi square f and these and all you don't have to learn these are for small samples which is used okay this and all you don't have to study at all luckily you have it in your higher classes so so for exam statistics is for 40 marks sir statistics is for how much marks 40 um i don't think it is like that now somebody told me they are changing it it won't be 40 40 and 20 rather it will be a mix up i don't know whether that is approved or no like before how was it math 40 stats 40 and logical reasoning 20 right okay i don't know some i heard it just a few days back that they might change it to 100 marks in total there might be math 40 or around 50 or uh, 60 also stats might be 20 30 in that way but i'm not sure that will be approach even if that is approach you will have equal questions that is math 40 stats 40 and logical reasoning 20 okay sir yes yeah. okay yes yeah. we are almost done and now students we come back to square one please write the side heading standard normal distribution standard normal distribution okay let's start standard normal distribution okay under standard normal distribution students start the point this way first point whenever okay not whenever right like this if we take mu equals to 0 and sigma equals to 1 right this point 
first point. If we take mu equals to zero and sigma equals to one, we have we have write this probability density function f of x equals to 1 by square root 2 pi e to the power minus z square by 2. So the formula only changed completely. It was 1 by sigma, sir. Sigma is not there. Yes, sir, we understood why sigma is not there because sigma is 1. So 1 into, instead of writing sigma, if you write 1, even if you don't write 1, it's the same thing. Root 2 pi was there, sir, before also in the PDF. e to the power minus. Here some data is missing, sir. Yes. What was the data here? Instead of z, there was something as x minus mu divided by sigma. Isn't it, students? Yes, sir. In the previous formula, z was nothing but x minus mu divided by sigma. And that is missing here and that is written you know, replaced by Z. Why, students? Because we have a formula to work out for binomial, sir. We have a formula to work out for poson, sir. But you till now did not give us the PMF or the formula to find out normal distribution, students. That is why normal distribution has a variable called Z or Z, which is known as, which is known as the standard normal variate or the standard normal deviate. It is called as the standard normal variate or the standard normal deviate. Please underline this part. Z is called as the standard normal variate. And what is Z? Please write it somewhere. Z equals to x minus mu divided by sigma. Standard normal variate after writing this point. Please write that z equals to x minus mu divided by sigma. This is called the formula. Okay. Because students here, otherwise z will be equal to x only if you see here. Because in standard normal variate, mu is 0, standard deviation is 1, x minus 0 is x, sir. x divided by 1 is x itself, is x itself, so z equals to x. That is why this is called as the normal variate, standard normal variate. That means we are giving a standard to the normal distribution. How we used to say there p of x, p of x equals to the same way, standard normal variate is also x. But when will it become x? Only when mu is 0 and standard deviation is 1. Okay? So that is why this is the formula students of x minus mu divided by sigma that you should remember. And you should also know that in a standard normal distribution or standard normal variate, what will happen? Z will be equal to x and all your sums are based on this particular concept. Next, we will look at some other things, some very, very important things here, which questions are asked. Now, students, this part, let me highlight it here. This one, area of x equals to p into x less than equal to x. Just underline it, okay? Sometimes they will ask you this question, what is this area of x equals to? What is this area of x equals to, okay? This is, we call it as area of x. Otherwise, it is known as a cumulative distributive function. Cumulative distribution function. Area of x or area of zero. The symbol is used to find area. And area of the curve, students, let me make a point very clear now. Now, there might be some sums which we cannot do from set B, set C and all. Sir, why can't we do? Because we can't do, uh, I mean, we can do the sum, but we have to use area under the normal curve. Okay, and where do we find that area under the normal curve? There is a normal distribution table, students, like log tables. There is something called a normal distribution table. Using that table, we solve the sum. But for your exam, there is no table. So we cannot do some of the sums here. But 
maybe one sum i will do i will show you how to do it from the normal tables but you cannot use the normal tables nor you can calculate it with the calculator okay but so why are these questions given then because sometimes for exam they might ask this question given in the bracket they will give you the value also okay they will give you the value in the bracket saying that area under so much 3.5 is so much 0.2233 or something like this some number they'll give you okay for that condition they have given some sum so we will do a couple of sums later these are mostly in exercise c until there we do not have any sum so because these are five mark questions again for ncrt uh, syllabus students okay so delta uh, sorry not delta area of x is known as cumulative distribution function and how do we read it we read it like this area under the standard normal curve okay so students understand this we come to the same old debate now now let us consider this curve let us consider this curve as a standard normal curve what's the difference between a normal curve and a standard normal curve the normal curve mean in the standard normal curve this mean is equal to zero now when we were speaking about the area students okay what is the area of x under zero or x less than equal to zero this is the area this is the value of x no this is zero no below zero this is the area and how much is this area 0.5 so students how much is the area from minus infinity to plus infinity 0.5 one sir one sir full area is one how much is the area from 0 to infinity 0.5 0.5 okay so that area remains the same that's why late that time i did not uh, that's the reason that time i did not tell you to write certain values because we will write those values right now students okay some time okay so remember area zero means okay whenever they tell you like this area zero with this symbol if they have given zero that means what is the answer for the area student this is called as cumulative sir this is cumulative zero means it starts from the left hand side minus infinity to zero minus infinity to zero okay so understand if they give you like this area zero if they have given this symbol and they have given you zero what does it mean it means area of the curve from minus infinity to zero and that is how much 0.5 okay next some important points to remember here okay after this students directly before i get into something else yeah this i already told you that it is x minus mu by sigma okay see here uh, the values of area are different i told you right the values of area can be different and where this will be given in the normal distribution table this table is called as the biometrica table students for a table and all will not be given for the exam okay we will not have tables for the exam either they will give us the value okay i will share you the table in uh, the set c questions when i solve a similar question i'll share you the table regarding uh, how the values are there okay because i have the second view ncrt textbook with me since i teach them so i will share the values at that particular time okay one more important part students underline this area of minus k is equal to area of plus k k is a constant number that means students area of minus 3 0.3 and area of plus 0.3 is the same why because it is so much away from the mean no mu minus standard deviation mu plus standard deviation one neighborhood itself so how much ever they are away from this area to this area we are not telling the value but we are telling the area area is the same no students the gap is same if you are moving from 0 to 5 the gap is same as 0 to minus 5 that means area is also from minus k equal to area of plus k so remember that okay that time we wrote mu minus here students mu minus 3 sigma mu minus 2 sigma now i'm telling you mu is how much students under standard normal curve mu is 0 0 standard deviation is 1 1 so what will be the answer here Minus that's three. what is given here minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 middle one mu is 0 1 2 3 okay it's the same thing 
that is why here also in the graph i told you please write the this part itself don't write anything else because this is same no student this is called z now okay this is called z that is minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 because this is the standard normal variate z is what z is called as the standard normal variate sir minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 Okay, middle is zero because mean is zero. First neighborhood the values are minus one and plus one. Second neighborhood minus two plus two. Third neighborhood minus three plus three. Now students, please know these areas, sir. First neighborhood. First neighborhood, sir. What is the area, students, for the first neighborhood? Zero point three four one three five, sir. first neighborhood left side is equal to first neighborhood right side sir or area from minus 1 to 0 sir and 0 to plus 1 both are equal to 0.3145 0.3145 because why i am telling you to remember this value students sometimes they might give us a question in set c or for your icai exam and you might tell sir i need the table they are not going to give you the table Sir, they have not given the value also in the question. How would I work out? You should remember, students, these values. If they have given the area from zero to one, and you don't know this number, three four one five. Easy to remember, students. Okay, for one it is three four one five. Be it negative or positive, what we have to do? We just have to remember for one it is thirty four point one three five. Okay, for two it is. Forty-seven, seven, two, five. Just remember these numbers and forty-nine, eight, sixty-five. Now, tomorrow, if somebody wakes you up in the midnight and asks you even this answer, right? For example, if they ask you, if somebody asks you, what is the value from, what is the value of the area from here to here? And this, if they tell you, is minus two to plus two. If they ask you this area, you should know it, students. This is zero minus two to zero or zero to two. Any one, if I know, is enough. Sir, I can make it double. It is zero point four seven seven two five. Just multiply into two students. Why? This nine is only for one. How much it is? Nine decimal points. Yeah, nine five two four something, right? Sorry, nine five four six something. Add this. Zero point four seven seven two five plus into two. Yeah, zero point nine five four five. Sir, if they give function of the curve, then we can integrate and find, no, sir. Yeah, you can integrate and find if you know. Oh, if you know integration, if you are a basic math student, yes, you can uh, integrate it and find it. Okay. Or imagine here they have given you this way. They have given you from minus one to three. Ah, uh, you should know. Zero to one is how much, sir? Zero to one is zero point three four one three five. Zero to three, sir. Zero to three is this one, sir. Four nine eight six five. Okay. Point four nine eight six five. I will add it to point three four one three five. Zero point eight four this area. Only when they have given full numbers like this, you can do students. If they have given 1.2, 1.3, and all, it's difficult. Okay, for that you have to use biometric tables, and those sums till now they have not given you for ICI. If they give you in those kind of sums, they will give you the number in the brackets. Okay, and if they have not given the number and still they have given the sum, that means it is a direct one like this. So these are the values you need to remember. And also the entire area is easy to remember, students. You just need to add these numbers. Okay, this is sixty-eight two eight. Okay, same way one more is nine five four five nine five four six. They have got and one more is ninety-nine point seven three. These numbers you need to remember. Okay. Apart from these, what you should know is, students. Let me ask you again. Students, normal distribution mean is called as hear the word properly. Normal distribution mean mu mu, mu. standard deviation yamma standard deviation sigma. sigma sigma. Okay, students, standard normal distribution mean is it mean mean 
standard normal distribution m sir mu mu standard normal standard normal mu is how much mean is how much zero zero standard deviation one one okay so students during normal distribution it is mu and sigma sir during standard normal distribution it is zero and one sir now i will ask you one by one question and you will write one by one points there students first mean is zero standard deviation is one this you have already written if you have not written you can write it now or write their heading as properties of standard normal variate properties of standard normal variate or standard normal distribution however you want to write it students let's compare mean over sir standard deviation over sir students points of inflection point of inflection what was it in normal distribution x x minus mu or x plus mu is it x minus mu x plus mu standard normal mu Sorry, minus normal. standard deviation or mu mu minus standard. sigma and mu plus sigma that means in standard normal it should be how much students in standard normal point minus of 1 plus 1 sir the minus 1 plus 1 0 minus 1 is minus 1 0 plus 1 is plus 1 don't worry i will show you this points in some time i'm just asking now students what was the mean deviation in normal distribution mean deviation 0.8 sigma 0.8 sigma sir how much will it be in standard normal 0.8 0.8 into 1 sir it is 0.8 what about quartile deviation in standard normal how will it be sir so, minus 0.675 0.675 sir quartiles will be minus 0.675 plus 0.675 total deviation is 0.675 okay yes. point of inflection you told me mean deviation you told me quartile deviation you told me okay so let us write the points now and where is it if i have forgotten anything there it's at the end the last part standard normal distribution okay first point students okay one more point we have not noted down that is this mean median mode everything will be zero why because mean is zero no sir mean median mode everything are equal So mean median mode is zero. Next, this we have already written. If you have not written, please write. Mean deviation is zero point eight. Quartile deviation is zero point six seven five. I made you recollect. Right. Point of inflection again. Which distribution, sir? This is this is standard normal distribution. Okay, is how much minus one and plus one. There it was different. Mu plus sigma, mu minus sigma. two tails this i have already told you before it's the same point never ever touch the horizontal axis okay these are the four points you should remember students four points you should remember okay for so 0.005 0.025 0.01 and 0.01 you should remember these points okay the upper and lower points of the standard normal variable okay this points are nothing but two point these values you should remember they might ask you direct question for z equals to 0.005 what is the lower and upper point it's 2.58 for 0.025 it's how much it's 1.96 okay the lower and upper probability percent point uh this is not there for you as much this is completely a new chapter in testing of hypothesis we use this value okay uh to test whether the value exists or no or doesn't exist or no okay we do something called as uh, some diagrams like this like a bell shaped curve and then we highlight okay if it is 0.05 that means this area and this area this is 2.58 and this is also 2.58 and then we uh, do the entire sum and we check what is the answer we get if we get the answer here we say okay this data is correct it is accepted if we get the value somewhere here we tell that the data falls in the rejection region and it is rejected and all that it's a completely different case study 
okay here they have just told that they will they help us in getting these values okay we can find using normal variable itself these upper and lower key percentage points okay so so what that, are those points sir uh, 0.005 yeah. 0.05 yeah. how do i tell you see for example in uh, the chapter right which you study in hypothesis okay they are the see for example imagine you have the data okay of 100 soldiers okay and of 100 soldiers i told you the mean is 60 kg okay and there will be a question to you if i select 20 soldiers okay with an average height of 45 kg okay there will be a question to you saying okay do you think these the height or weight of these soldiers will be below 60 or above 60 okay will be less than the average or more than the average by looking at it you only know 20 people you have chosen their average is 45 overall average is 60 that means definitely it will be below average no but still okay they will ask you the question is it is it below average is it below average and that time what we do is and they will tell you okay uh, prove this taking into the confidence at 5% both the sides take the data okay 5% both the sides now 5% okay one minute sir 5% both the sides if they tell you if they tell you 5% on both the sides how much is 5% is how much 0.05 divided by two both the sides no is how much 0.025 5% on both the sides so we get 1.96 that means 1.96 here 1.96 here these are our boundaries and then we use x minus mu divided by sigma and find out so these are nothing but these upper and lower probability percentage points means okay p is then then probability percentage points is that is when you select a particular data and we assign certain points okay of probability that your data might lie outside this variable or inside this variable so these key points okay probability points are like boundaries for the area okay boundaries for the area you don't have to study them much only direct questions always with regards to points okay 0.05 0.025 0.01 okay? okay actually in statistical language no we don't read it like this also we read it 1% one tail we read it, read it like this 1% one tail one tail means what a bell shaped curve actually has two tails here and here okay this is one tail this is one tail so when they speak about one tail okay 1% one tail means only one side either left side or right right side that they will give it to you okay if it is less than then left side if it is more than then right side that they will also give it to you in the data when you do another chapter but you don't have this okay that time it is 2.33 if they are telling you 1% two tail Okay, instead of one tail, they are telling you two tail. One percent divided by two will be, I think, zero point zero zero five. Two tail means you will take minus two point five eight here. You will take plus two point five eight here. Okay, and this these are the tail values, confidence limits. We call them in statistical language. Okay, level of significance. Okay. So that's uh, done. Students, quickly. let us uh, finish the set a questions quickly in 5 minutes we should finish all set a questions i have the answers but still in case you have doubts so please mark okay a theoretical probability distribution first one agreed exists only in theory and exists in real life okay both are true Yes. Pro probability distribution will be discrete continuous infinite a or b sir both sir okay yes discrete and continuous important discrete probability distribution sir poisson distribution sir important one is it is normal sir actually but they have given here discrete in discrete we have studied only two sir binomial and poisson okay and binomial itself is approximated to poisson because we can't do big data there 
okay so poisson distribution is an important discrete distribution binomial is also but it is one of the important most important is poisson because binomial tends to poisson and there is anyways no binomial option for here so no you know uh, tension also of the uh, is, is it binomial or poisson okay important continuous continuous we have learned only one sir that is normal distribution, normal distribution. parameter i told you very important question every year repeated either parameter or statistic the parameter is a characteristic of population Popul example for parameter sample mean binomial distribution sample size population answer is population sir population mean because parameter i told you is estimated the data estimated from the population be it mean standard deviation or whatever Sir, size why you didn't take because it is sample. Sample in the sense statistic. What is the trial? Produce an outcome which is neither certain nor impossible. Okay, it is neither certain nor impossible. I have made you underline this. Important characteristics of Bernoulli. Sir, Bernoulli we didn't study only. Okay, but the same person did it. And I told you also two things about him. One is there are only success and failure there, and the trials are. independent okay trials are infinite infinite it will be poisson okay not uh, bernoulli and in binomial there are finite trials if there were finite uh, trials here that would be binomial pmf of binomial distribution students is npx into p to the power x into q to the power n minus x next If x is a binomial variant with parameters n and p, then x can assume the x range zero, one, two, up to n, and both are inclusive. Okay, and sir, very importantly, they have given sir any whole number. We didn't see that zero comma zero point one comma zero point two. We saw zero, one, two, three. Okay, whole numbers. So don't get confused between option B and C. A binomial distribution is never symmetrical, never positively skewed, never negatively skewed. Symmetrical when p is zero point five. So it is symmetrical when it is zero point five. Mean of the binomial distribution with n and p is mean is n into p. Okay, students. Question number thirteen onwards. Uh, i think it will take more time so we will not hurry now we will do from question number 13 tomorrow and also we will do section b and section c so i think tomorrow's entire day will be to only solve the sum so we have finished 13 there are still a lot of questions students in this there are around 39 43 questions so we will discuss it tomorrow easily okay please do section a students today please do section class sir oh sorry not tomorrow that that's the next day Okay, that's on Friday. Okay, the so students, please work out this. Okay, um, section A, please work out so that if you have doubts, you can ask those sums in section A and B. Anyways, I'm doing all the sums, but if in case you have certain doubts, we can go through those questions first. Okay. Okay. okay so let me 